It is good to be back in the saddle. It's been several weeks since I've been live and I am officially coming to you guys live in Georgia. We have completed our move and we are here. So you can see my background. We're not fully set up. My desk is not in yet, but I am here. And so uh, I am I am in what I'm referring to as a sea of boxes. There are boxes everywhere. Um, I hope to come out of this sea in the next couple of weeks, but we should have like lights and everything uh, and be back fully. Hopefully next week, my desk, my new desk is supposed to be coming in tomorrow. So hopefully I'll have that set up and have the lights and everything back up. So hopefully it's not too dark. Um, and hopefully you can see me. I've got my computer set up in my, uh, in my living room. <laughs> we're, we're a hot mess over here, but I did not want another week to go by and me miss you. So as you guys are joining, why don't you let me know what you are drinking? Hopefully you did bring a drink. I am drinking water. Um, so I am drinking cool bottled water. <laughs> let me know in the comments what you guys are drinking. And um, some of you guys are new to me. So let me know what city and state you're in. I am currently in the great peach state of Georgia. Water, water. Okay. Carlton, we were just talking about you. And um, I think your CSM is... Rachel or Alto, and she has not heard from you. We were wondering where you were. So I will reach out to you after this because we want to make sure that you are plugged into the right circle. You are a part of now our inner circle. So we want to make sure that you are plugged in and you are um, getting what you need out of the program. So I'll reach out to you separately after this. Carolyn, nice to have you on. You know, it's been a minute since I've done a live from my phone. I think when we were looking for a house in uh, May, I did a couple of sessions from my cousin's bedroom uh, in my on my phone. But before then, I think it's been well over a year. So, you know, I know I'm a little late. Um, you're also in Georgia. You know, somebody did a post earlier in the week about uh, uh, people in the Atlanta area. And it seems to be that there's quite a few of you guys in the Georgia area. I am a little, I'm a little outside of um, Atlanta. I'm in a town called Stockbridge, suburb called Stockbridge. So it's not too far from um, Atlanta. I think it's about 30 minutes away, but we are enjoying it. Um, excited to be here. And excited to be back in the saddle, like talking to you guys. I've missed you guys. The last couple of months have been a little bit uh, crazy for us as we've been trying to figure out the move and um, what we're, you know, trying to get here. And now that we're here, I'm just ready to get right back into things. All right. So in my usual fashion, this is a new time for us. We will be coming live at Eastern Standard Time at 5 o'clock instead of Central Standard at 5. We'll be coming live at this time uh, for the rest of the month. Uh, for the month of July, we've got some exciting stuff happening in August and September. Um, Nyla says that she is relocating to Texas, so um, I'm preparing myself. Uh, Kingsland, Georgia. I wonder where that is. It's an hour from Savannah and Jacksonville. Okay, so I know where Savannah. That is by the um, ocean. That was going to be like if I wasn't able to find a house in this area, we were definitely going to move to Savannah. I was like, I want to be right by the beach. Um but, you know, I really am enjoying it because in Texas, wherever you're moving in Texas, I just moved from the Dallas-Fort Worth area. I have been in Texas since I was nine. I'm 48, ye 48 years young uh, right now. And so I've been in, I was in Texas for most of my life. So to move states, that was a big uh, uh, move for us both. Um, but I'm really enjoying it out here. There's big, giant trees. There's really not a lot of trees in the DFW area. Um, so we are excited to be amongst the trees. Uh, it's very humid here. Um, but it's been just really nice so far. So I'm looking forward to a long and prosperous uh, time in the state of Georgia. So McKinney, yep, I was right outside of McKinney, which uh, I was in a city called Frisco, which is north of Dallas. Um, and I guess it would be west of McKinney. So nice area McKinney is. Bonham, I'm not too familiar with. I think that's outside of Houston. I'd go to McKinney, but that's just me. 
All right, so this is what I want you guys, for you guys who have joined me live and anyone who catches me in the replay and you catch this, what I'd like you to do is answer the next couple of questions that I'm going to ask is, how many of you out there right now have a Facebook group or are thinking about um, starting a Facebook group? Um, if you are, if you're on Facebook, which you are clearly because you're, you're joining me live through Facebook, you know, I think, um, um, I think that Facebook sent out an email. I want to say it was in May or may have been in June. And in that email, Zuckerberg talks about how much, you know, how many great new features they just released, uh, for Facebook groups. They've given admins more, um, more features to manage the group, um, allow you to do a lot more great things with your group, um, particularly if you've got a public group. Um, thanks, Z. <laughs> I'm in Georgia, Z. Can you believe it? I left Texas. So, um, and so Facebook's target plan is to really, I mean, they've been doing this for several years now, but really they are investing a lot of dollars effort and money in blowing up the Facebook group feature set. And so for those who may not know there, you are in a group right now. So you're in a private group that I've created. I created this group about two years ago, um, 2018. So I want to say that's almost three years now. It was three years last this past May. Um, actually, I think it may be two years. Maybe 2019 is when I created this group. Nonetheless, I am not new to groups. I've had a Facebook group around my online travel business, uh, along, around a business, online business now since I want to say 2015. Um, and I, uh, have had this group. I want to say, I think it's two years. It's either two or three years. And my group, this group is private, but the whole purpose of this group is to, allow me to come and um, share my knowledge about uh, the travel industry, right? And if you are thinking about a group for your particular area, you're probably thinking about a group for your travel business, right? So some of you have answered that you have a group. Some of you are thinking about a group, um, but you'd like to do one. Um, someone put that they have a group, but it's a dud. And that's actually my next question, which is, you know, how is engagement in your group, right? So like I said, I'm not new to Facebook groups, but I've had one since 2000 and gosh, I've had, I've had a group. I want to say my first group was 2016. Um, and I created it at the recommendation of my advertising company. I had hired an advertising company back in 2016 to help me with Facebook ads and to get new clients. And she told me, she was like, you know, Facebook groups are the, the cat's meow. And I was like, well, I want something that's the cat's meow. And, you know, I jumped in like many of you do. I jumped in, I got, a, got myself a Facebook group and I was like, wow. But what I found is, it was hard. I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a minute, but it was hard. Like people would come in and some would talk and some wouldn't. And, you know, I really found myself completely and totally consumed by that group. So, you know, you, you create these groups and some of you are maybe scared to create a group. You don't understand how you, um, can make that group work for you. You know, it's kind of cool, but you really maybe don't know all about it. So that's what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about that. But my last question is, is if you do have a group, is your group making money? for you. So is it making money for your travel business? So if you've got a group or you're thinking about a group, do you think if let's say you don't have a group and you're thinking about a group, do you think that the group can make you money in your business? Or do you think it's just going to be a, a group that you're going to have to maintain and it's just going to be there, right? So for the person who has a group and it's a dud, like I assume that you're not making any money in the group. I assume that you don't have any engagement in the group. I assume that it's not the cat's meow for you, right? So that's what we're going to do uh, today is talk about uh, how we can make this group the cat's meow for your travel business, right? That's not the title of it, but I certainly like it. But before I do that, let me introduce myself. So I've talked a little bit about uh, moving and maybe you don't even know who the heck I am. My name is Sunday Gardner. I am the online travel boss and I talk all things launching, marketing and operating a successful and profitable travel business. My goal with this group is to provide a forum 
for newbie travel business owners, existing travel business owners, and people who are on the cusp of deciding to jump and launch their travel business, a forum to get information and accurate information about what it takes to accurately launch your group, right? Not, not your group, but your business, launch your business, operate that business. Also, the mindset of having a successful travel business, right? Because I know that there is a plethora of information out there in the internet streets, even on Facebook, Google, you Google travel business and you're going to get, you know, pages and pages of information. But here inside of this group, I intend and my goal here was to create a safe forum. I don't care what host agency you are associated or affiliated with. I don't care if you are independent, you're with the host agency. But my idea and my goal in this group was to create a safe forum for you to be able to get information that is going to help you inside of your travel business. Now, what I will say is there is no recruiting allowed inside of this uh, group. I do not care what uh, host agency you are with, um, but I do ask that if you are a part of this group, not to recruit inside of this group. So what we're going to be talking about today is the cat's meow, the, the, the very thing that Facebook itself is pouring its time and money and energy in is the feature set of Facebook groups. And so many people utilize them incorrectly, right? So what we're going to talk about today is how do you grow a Facebook group and get new leads in your travel business with that said group? That's exactly what I teach my clients inside of Travel Passions Profit, uh, Travel Passions to Profits program. I teach you how to create that group, how to grow the group, and then ultimately how to monetize the group. And we're going to talk about how you can do that in today's uh, training. Are you guys excited about that? You know, I've got some people I see saying that they're all ears. Um, someone said that they're struggling. They started off strong now, um, but they're lost and they want to get more traffic. I mean, that's really, before we dive into how to grow the group, let's talk about why a Facebook group. Why is Facebook group the cat's meow? Now, if you're not as old as me, you're probably, what the hell does the cat's meow mean, right? But I am a little bit older, right? So I'm, uh, I'm in my late 40s, about to be 50 in a couple of years. And so really what that means is, like a group is, you know, back in 2016, when my, um, my coach talked to me about a Facebook group, uh, they had said, it's so funny because nobody calls me all day. And right now I've gotten it like at least 15 calls while I'm on live. Um, you know, back in 2016, when I was introduced to a Facebook group, what she had told me was, is that your Facebook group group is like an email list on steroids. And I was like, well, I don't really use my email list, so what do you mean by that, right? You know, and if you're anything like me, I'm not like a prolific writer. I write okay, but like writing is not my thing. Like I definitely love to read, but like sitting out and writing email love letters and doing that every single do email marketing is not my strong suit. But she was like, it's your, it is your Facebook group is your, it's an email list on steroids. And I was intrigued by that because I was like, well, okay, what does that mean? And she was like, you really get to interact with your prospective clients on a way more intimate level than you do via email, right? And email is a conversation that you can have and it can be pretty in intimate when you're having that conversation via email, but it's still a one-way kind of communication, right? But at least... I'm showing up live inside of this group talking to about 20 different people inside of the group right now and I'm having a personal conversation with you and I some of you I've never even met right so do you see the power of what a group can do and you can do that you can do that on your personal platform but you can do that in your group and your group is going to be delivered, the content's going to be delivered to the, the, the members of the group. Facebook assumes that if you've got people who are members of your group, that those people have opted into the content, right? They didn't just randomly like, they read the description of the group and they decided to become a member hence a community member. And if you do it right, that is where your tribe is, right? So you get to build a specific and uh, 
as intimate of a relationship with your perspective or existing clients as you want inside of your group. So the power of Facebook group, even back in 2016, was very clear to me, right? The ability to do that and connect to people that I normally wouldn't be able to do, I was intrigued by that even five years ago. But, you know, that was really 2016. And you think to yourself, oh, you know, that was maybe you could say the beginning. It really wasn't the beginning of social media, but it certainly was the beginning of the, the height or the cusp of when, you know, everybody was making money on social media and not, and, 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 and really big players or, or small players who really knew how to play the online game really were really capitalizing on social media. Now you fast forward five years later, everybody and their mother is on social media, on Facebook, right? Everybody and their mother has a Facebook group. So how to monetize that group and how to utilize that group, there is a unique strategy that you want to be able to do that to make it effective for your travel business. You can't just create a group like you bit did it back in 2016 and just assume that you're going to start dripping out money out of it, right? There still is some strategy that you need to do. We're going to talk about that strategy today. So Facebook groups are your specialized tribe building community, right? I want you to think about that. Like if you are a special, if you specialize in my favorite example, wedding destinations, and you have a tribe of, of women or men or couples who are engaged or about to get married and are interested in a wedding destination inside of your group, and all you did was talk wedding destinations, and you sold your services, your travel services to that group, wouldn't that be pretty powerful? Like, wouldn't that be great to have nothing? You wouldn't have your girlfriend, your mom. I mean, you probably have your mom initially, right? Because my mom's inside of my group, sorry, right? But initially, you got maybe your, your bestie besties in there. But when you're talking about growth, that you're selectively getting inside of your group the very people that you want to talk to you about your services, right? So if you're specializing in wedding destinations, do you want people who want to do like, you know, adventure trips to, uh, you know, the Grand Cayman and jump off of a cliff? No, you want people who are engaged about to get married or potentially you want people who are about to celebrate an anniversary or some sort of romantic uh, getaway. You want those people inside your group, right? So what if you could build a group of your selected identities identified type of client and build a community and you get to talk directly to them. You're not talking to somebody else. You're not in somebody else's group, but that's a group that you create. You get to deliver the content that can be good and scary at the same time, but it's your community. It's your community of people that love you, right? That are wanting to relate and hear what you have to say. Wouldn't you find that pretty powerful of a marketing tool for your business? Wouldn't you want to have one of those things for your business, right? I did, and I do, and I still do, right? So we have now upwards of 5,000 people inside of this group. My email list is upwards of 6,000 people, and we have grown that list. I want to say we started our group pretty much over last May. So last May, I cleaned out the group. I think I was at about 1,300. Chopped the group down from 1,300 to 400 people last May. I did this last May. So it's a little over a year. And in a little over a year, I have over 5,000 people in my group. And not only that, I monetize the group. So I get sales for our program outside of the people that are in my group. Not only that, I teach travel agents how to do the very same thing. All of the people who are clients of TP2, they have started their groups with zero. They had their mom in their group or their bestie best best in their group. And they've grown their group from zero to hundreds of people who are their ideal client and they are selling inside of their group. That's power, right? A community of people that are exactly ours. So we're going to talk about how to do that today. Now, that was a long introduction, so sorry about that. But I wanted to set the stage for why it's important that having a group or community of your ideal client and what that power can do for you. All right, so now we understand why we want to do that, but let me give you some experiences of the what not to do. So back in 2016, 
my my coach at the time, the the ad agency that I hired, who told me that you know Facebook group was the cat's meow. She told me this, but I I didn't do it. She's like, don't go in and give too much in your group. I was like, what? Because what happens is you 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 grow the group, however, whichever means, and you grow it of your ideal client and you get excited, right? And it's like your baby, right? So I always tell my clients, treat your group like your third child. <laughs> and if for any of you who have three kids, I have three kids exactly. So my poor third son, uh, my third child, you know, I, every time I say that, I wonder if he's listening to me. But the third child doesn't get like, doesn't have a shrine to him or her, right? My first child, there was like, you know, there were pictures like every five minutes of her activity, right? When she walked, when she talked, when she crawled. Your third child may get a picture a year, right? And that makes it on the wall, right? You love your third child. Don't get me wrong, I love my baby Omar. He's not a baby anymore, but I just love my third child. But he doesn't get all of my attention. I don't mean my child does it, but my group doesn't give all of my attention. Who gets all of my attention are my clients, right? This group gets my attention and I show up and provide value, but it's very strategic in terms of that value. Same thing with your group, right? Your people are they come here that you're going to provide them value and then ultimately you sell. So in exchange for that value, I'm going to pitch to you. So, you know, if you're, if you're not clear about that, that's what's happening, right? Is I'm going to come up, I'm going to show up, I'm going to give you value. I'm going to give you information that's going to help you with your travel business with the hopes that you enroll in our program, right? We're not going to hard sell to you. I'm not going to try and ram it down your throat and neither are you, but our clients are successful in showing up in their groups providing value and those people recognize that they're the experts in the field and the niche that they're in, right? I've got a client who is a wedding destination expert and she's got a wedding destination and she gets her wedding clients out of that group, right? I've got another client who specializes in power, uh, in, uh, couples travel and she's got a couples group and she gets she gets clients out of that group, right? Same thing for you. But when I started back in 2016, I treated my group like my first child, right? Because I was excited. It's exciting to get new leads in your group. It's exciting to get your ideal client and you just start talking to them and you start, and I, I mean, I created this like social media delivery schedule of content. Like I was showing up in the group every day. I was delivering content and I was giving everything, my heart and soul in the group and what happened is is that group it was just me talking it was a one-way street right there wasn't engagement because I didn't really understand the secrets of engagement right so I didn't understand really how to give enough but not give too much right why would anybody buy a program if I was giving it all away inside of the group so I had to learn how to strategically create that content and deliver that content we're going to talk about that as one of the tips but what I want to tell you is there's certainly a way the power of your group can be powerful as long as you do it properly what you don't want to do is what I did right I was pouring my heart and soul out and many of you all do that you pour everything into your group not only that you're delivering so much content you're dropping promotions in the group you're telling you're flipping backwards and forwards and all sorts of tricks to try and get the attention of your group members but they're like okay she's giving everything away why would I use her services she's already given me the package right I can just go replicate that package and go book it myself and not have to talk to anybody right I don't have to pay any fees I don't have to do anything right so what we want to do is have groups that are highly engaged that are profitable right that are monetizable so how do we do that are you guys ready let's talk about how we do that I've got four ways that you Grow your group, not only grow your group, but you show up in your group and you ultimately get leads and monetize the group. All right, step one, are you guys ready? Somebody type, you define a niche. You create a group around a specialty. So now I talked to a client many, uh, many months ago. I want to say it was probably the end of last year and she had a budget travel group. She was selling like Vegas trips in her group. And so she was monetizing the group. But you know, the reality is, is that, you know, Vegas trips, I mean, they were a couple of hundred bucks, right? Right. So, you know, her commission was probably pretty low. It was probably in the fifties, less than a hundred dollars in commission. And she wasn't charging any fees. So even though she had monetized the group and she was getting clients out of the group, 
it was a lot of energy because she was trying to find the cheapest deals and she was creating this deal uh, deal group and people were in there. So they didn't really want to utilize her to book. They wanted to utilize her to get the best deals and they were low commission deals, right? Now, certainly, can you argue, did she monetize the group? Well, yes, she monetized the group. She didn't follow my process. This is what she did. So she had a niche. The niche was about around budget travel. But here's the thing. I don't want to compete against Expedia.com. I don't want to compete against Priceline.com or frankly, any of the other Budget.com sites, right? That's not what my niche or I want your niche to be in, right? Because when you don't have the money, you nearly do not have the millions of dollars of advertising and budgeting dollars to be able to compete at that level. And there's no reason to, right? There is a, I want you to think of our market as tiers, right? You got the low end tier, mid market, and then you got high end tier, right? For you to really make money in this, you want to be mid to high end here, right? You want to be after clients who are at the mid to high end luxury travel, right? That's where you provide value because those people at the mid and high end here, they don't have the time, right? They're busy professionals. They don't have the time to go stress, go and get on Google and look to save $10 on a trip, right? They want the trip planned for them holistically and not have to think about it. And they want their family to have a great time. They want to, they want to stay in an amazing location, have an, ex, an amazing experience. And they want that trouble out of their head right? They want a done for you service. And that's where your proposition is. And so the question becomes, what is the niche or the area of travel that you want to specialize? And who do you want to work with? And you create a group around that. So let me use my examples. Again, I've got a client who specializes in wedding destinations. The people that are in her group are people that want to do a wedding in a non-traditional way. And they may be wanting to do it themselves and they don't know how, or they want to hire somebody. So she may have a different type. So she has an opportunity to offer two services, right? Inside of her group. She can teach somebody how to do that and create a class and sell that class inside of that group. She can also offer her services or done for you services. And she does at least one of them and is working on the second part, right? So the number one thing that you want to do before you decide a group is create a niche, right? Understand who your target market is and build that group around that. All right. Does that make sense? Hopefully everybody, if it does, give me some love. I love hearts. Let me know that that makes sense, right? Niche, market, understand who it is and build the group around it, right? So when you grow the group, you're not looking for your mom, uncle, niece, nephew, brother-in-law, sister, his best friend, and the guy around the corner. You're looking for that specific market, right? You're looking for that specific person to be in your group, right? So you want to target those people. And so then the next thing that you want to do is you want to grow your group through Facebook ads. Now, many of you, I just talked to someone today and, and, and she told me, she said, I've used Facebook ads and it hasn't worked for me. So I need to understand why would I do it again? And the simple thing is because you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> that's the, that's the only simple answer is Facebook ads are not easy. They're not easy to learn. They are, um, they are, it's just complicated. I, I'm sorry that it is, but that is what he's done. He's created, he's created a tool that is not intuitive. It's not easy to just go into Facebook ads, pick the right ad type, understand how to target and figure out how to make it all work, right? Because there's more to the whole process of running Facebook ads than just the tool itself. There's a lot of things that you need to have connected, right? To make the engine really work. But once you get all those things connected, it's, it is the bomb.com like all day long. Like, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart to this day, I've been playing with Facebook ads since 2000 and, and you know, and playing is probably not the right word, but I have definitely been learning and honing my skills. And there's still so much about Facebook ads I don't know, but I have been in that space since 2010. So I effectively have been working with Facebook ads for 11 years now. And I will tell you, each and every one of you have either come to me by one of one of three ways. I feel like I'm now like... um 
Kevin, what's his name? Kevin, the 11, the 11 degrees of Kevin, right? Or what is it? The seven degrees of Kevin Bacon, right? Like you've come to me one of seven ways, right? You've come through me directly through a Facebook ad, or you've come through me from a Facebook recommendation because my group is so big now. Facebook recommends my group to people who are looking for me because of my group size. You may have come through me through to me through YouTube, right? You may have come through me through somebody being referred to you because there's been a lot of people who've been doing referrals. I think all of you that do that, who uh, invite other travel professionals inside of the group. But the reality is 80% of my group growth is due to Facebook ads. I spend a lot of money finding you to come inside of my group, right? And I don't, I don't do that to brag, but I do that to tell you, I don't have architects in this group, right? Who do I have? I have people who want to start travel businesses or who are already in the travel business. How did I find you through Facebook targeting? Can I find your ideal client? Yes, I can. I'm confident that I can. I'm confident that if you spend the effort on identifying your niche and identifying your target, we can find them on Facebook. Why am I so confident about that? Because there's 2 billion users on the platform every month. I want you to say that again. Two billion people across the world are on the platform every month. Chances are pretty high that your ideal client is on the platform, right? And what does that mean? That in no time in the history of marketing, small business owners like us, some little African-American girl living in Texas, working outside of her house in Frisco, has been able to hone the power of, Fris of Facebook ads and can get in front of her ideal client. And you can too, right? So when I say grow your, fa your group through Facebook ads, I'm like, it works. It's not a question of does it work? It's a question of how do you learn how does it work, right? Because it works, period. All of my clients, if they run their ads the way that I say, can find their ideal clients, right? Now, are there idiosyncrasies about, like, is it the perfect client? Does every client buy? Well, hell no. Everybody doesn't buy, right? But do you have the opportunity to get your message in front of the right person? It's better than you randomly handing out business cards, right, to strangers with the hope that they're going to call you. It's better than you running a, a radio ad with the hope that the people that are listening to that radio station are your ideal client. That's how specific the targeting in Facebook is, is that we can find your particular age, your type of client, what they're interested in is because until somebody shuts Zuckerberg down, he's got all that data that he makes available and accessible to us little people. And I love it, right? So I say, let him continue to collect the data as long as he makes it accessible to me and you, right? And that's what we do inside of number two is we grow your group through ads by understanding who you want to market to. We find them on Facebook and we position your group as the place that they want to be because they need you, right? And so obviously there's some terminology that we've got to use to be able to get them to stop the scroll and click on your ad. But the idea is that in a year's time, I went from 400 users in my Facebook group to over 5,000 users in a year's time, right? And I did that all through ads, okay? Um, and, you know, I won't talk about the money that I've made, but certainly I would say that not only is my Facebook group monetizable, has been monetized, my clients' Facebook groups have been monetized as well. All right, so that's number two. Number three is strategic content. So you remember when I started at the beginning and I said, hey, you know, when I started back in 2016, I treated my group as, you know, the first child instead of the third child. And again, it makes it sound like we don't love the kids. Of course we love our kids, right? But again, the amount of attention because you know better when you treat versus your first child versus your third child is all about experience, right? I don't need 
to express my love in 15,000 pictures, right? I can strategically still give my love to everybody by doing it in a strategic way. And it's a really bad analogy, but it's an analogy that I still stick with, right? Is, is that we want to be very strategic about the content that you do not want to give everything away, obviously, inside of your group, but you want to show up. You want to give them enough value that they understand that you are the expert in that area, right? Not too much. You want to teach them everything you want to get, you want to show up. And I teach you how to do that inside of our program. So strategic content is the key, right? It's not, and literally what I want, I want you to understand because when I first started in this, I was showing up. I, first of all, I hated going live. Like that was like, I scared me to death. I felt like, like sick every time I did it. Um, and I didn't want to do that. And so I was like, I don't want to go live, but I was writing content. I was doing posts. I was doing like three times th- uh, post three times, a three times a day at the beginning I was doing. So I was doing like 15, 20 pieces of content, right? I'm talking about questions, polls, uh, quotes, you know, all, you know, all these cute shit things, right? I had a theme of the day. I did, I mean, I did all this shit that was supposed to be value added content and it didn't make me any more of an expert than the one time a week I show up now inside of my group. I provide 45 minutes of very strategic and I don't mean strategic, but very valuable content to you all in terms of you running your business, right? Hopefully you guys find value in the content. You're able to use the content to be able to make decisions or make direction in your business. And that's what I do, right? So we spend all of our energy promoting that one piece of content versus all of the energy and manpower that we used to spend on delivering 20 pieces of content per week. We were doing 20 pieces of content per week, not per month, per week. We were dropping that much content and it didn't do anything more. So what I'm saying is, is that it doesn't require volume of content. What it requires is good content, right? Be strategic about the content that you want, right? Give your people what they want in a fashion that allows you to position yourself as the expert in the area that you are going to specialize in. So if you are going to specialize in romance travel, right, the content that you should be talking about is around why you need to connect, right? Why a romantic trip is going to be valuable to your relationship, right? Some of the things that you need to consider, right? So those topics in those areas are going to be around your particular niche, right? I don't talk about sports in this group. I don't talk about... I mean, I don't talk about shit that doesn't matter. I don't pick and choose. I'm not. And literally we were picking and choosing topics and trying to figure out topics to talk about. I mean, it was crazy. The amount of content I was putting out, even when I started, even restarted our group back into when I started this group, because I used to be a coach for general. I used to be a coach for salon, for salon business. And I was also a general Facebook ads coach and then became a specialized in travel in 2018. And even in those particular niches, I was still, I didn't have the concept of like being strategic about my content because again, I get all excited and overwhelmed by, you know, the interaction that I would get. And then I would just like throw up on them. Right. And it was too much. Right. So again, this number three is so critical is that you've got to be strategic about the content, not too much, not too little, but enough to really position yourself at the expert. And there is a science to that, right? And so that is what I teach you is like, what is the unique balance that you want to provide in terms of content that positions you the expert, the go-to travel professional for the niche that you specialized in, right? That's what you want to do in number three. And then the last thing that you want to do, and the last thing that I'll talk about before I get out of here is... You know, I've got this process that I refer to as ARC, which is you want to attract people, relate to them and convert. Now, if you do all of these things that I've said, you do number one, right? You've identified your niche. You've identified your ideal market. Let's say you spend money on Facebook ads. You're growing your group full of the people that you want inside of the group. You're dropping strategic content and people love you. 
boom, they love you, they love you, they love you, right? They're like always talking about how awesome you are, you are wonderful, but you do not drop anything. You do not give them the opportunity to buy what you've done is just spent money on getting friends, right? And that's not what you want to do. So what you want, number four, to be able to really monetize this is that you have to create offers. You have to create promotions, right? And there is a strategic way to create those promotions. That's what I teach you inside of the program as well is how do you show up as the expert with that content how do you drop a promotion in a way that's going to get people to buy from you right not take your information and then go curate it themselves why would they pick you to buy from you that's all part of the strategy right does that make sense so number one is your niche in your market number two is grow through Facebook ads number three is strategic content and number four is run promotion cycles, run cycles that give people the opportunity to buy. We don't want expensive friends. Like I want friends, but I don't create the group for friends. I create the group because ultimately we are selling our services and our products inside of the group, right? So what will happen is partic particularly in the pandemic, you know, we had clients, we were growing, um, we were teaching people how to run this process, but people were scared to run promotions because of uh, the pandemic. But what I will tell you is, is that people were buying travel even last year. My clients were selling travel even last year during the pandemic. Now, were people traveling? No. But were they selling travel for this year? Yes, they were. Absolutely. And they grew their groups, sold and dropped promotions and sold travel last year for this year. Did they sell? Did they make money off of their services? Yes, they did. Are they making money off of their services now? Yes, they are. So can you do it? Well, hell yes, you can. So the question, my question to you is who's ready to do this? Who's ready to create a group for their travel business that's going to make them money, right? That's going to get them engagement. That's not going to be a dud. That's going to get you ideal leads that meet your criteria, the kind of clients that you potentially want to work with, right? So that's what, that's what we're talking about today is, right? But before I talk to you about how you can take advantage of this, I want to just give you three examples of three clients that I've had um, in the last 12 months, right? Um, so one, one of my clients, we actually just worked on her non-travel business business, um, and I'm excited about what she's doing in that space too. But she came to me last October, and she was new to the travel business. She had experience as a a child care a center owner. She owns her own child care center. And um, uh, she wanted to start a travel business. She had heard that starting a travel business was a cool thing to do. Didn't know anything about the business. And she wanted to start her own travel business. So she came to me. She was inside of our group. We talked to her. And we met with her. And she ultimately joined the program. Um, and inside of the program, she now has her own Facebook group and it's called Power Couples. And inside of that group, what she does is she, um, she her and her husband, they host the group together and they do group, uh, they do, she sells fit to her couples, but she drops promotions that are couple, uh, I think she does one a quarter or maybe one every other month, uh, that she sells and she curates, uh, couple retreats and she sells those inside of her group, right? So she's got a group now in October. She knew nothing about the travel business. We fast forward to June and she is now on her second group retreat, right? Where she is sold. Um, I think she went to Jamaica last time or is going to Jamaica this time. Nonetheless, I know she's on her second group, right? So she was absolutely new to the travel industry and wanted to get a good start. So she did that. Follow the, follow the process. She was religious. She showed up. She did the work and she is growing her Facebook group. Now, subsequently, not only is she doing Facebook, uh, group, she's also now going to be a coach for, uh, her childcare. She's using the same system that I taught her there. She's using that to do for coaching for her childcare because that's her background, um, in childcare, starting childcare centers. So that's what she's going to be coaching people on. So the system not only worked for her travel business, it's also working for her second, now her third business, which is coaching for people who want to start travel agencies. Not only that, 
So we were not only able to grow her group with power, with couples, right? She wants to work with couples of a certain age, certain income level, certain professions, right? She's got a group there. We've been able to grow a group for her of people who want to start childcare businesses and she's killing it there, right? So my point is, is that your group is powerful no matter what industry you want to do and how you grow it, right? That's number one. Number two is I've got another client. She Last year, she came to me last June and right in the middle of pandemic and she was thinking about quitting. She was with a host agency. I'm not going to talk about who the host agency, but she was discouraged. The host agency was primarily known for recruiting. She wasn't getting the support that she needed. So what she did is she, she had joined this group. She had heard a couple of my trainings. We had dropped a, we dropped our first version of CAS last year, our client attraction system. She joined that program and now she is the Caribbean, uh, she is the Caribbean uh, travel boss. And so she shows up. Not only does that girl show up uh, amazing, she is selling travel to the Caribbean inside of her group and she's got couples. Her ideal client are couples, African American couples who want to see the world and they travel. So she does the same thing. She shows up. She's the expert in Caribbean travel and she sells travel in her group. She has created and she is created a community of couples African-American couples who want to travel and that's what she does. She does amazing, uh, she drops amazing promotions in her group. She drops amazing value in her group um, and she's doing all that through the same strategy. Got another example of a client who joined me. I want to say she joined me in July of last year and last year she was new to the travel industry as well. Knew nothing about travel. She is a optometrist, I think. I I think she's either an optometrist or an ophthalmologist. I can never remember which opto she is, but she is a single, uh, single, um, a relationship coach. And what she wanted to do is she wanted to create four trips a year and host these singles retreats. And she wanted a, uh, group uh, she wanted her community to be full of doctors, people who had doctorates and above, right? So master's degrees and above. And she wanted them to be African-American um, doctorates and above. So we have now created her a group. We didn't. She did the work. I taught her how to do it. She created a group full of single men and women doctors inside of her group and she curates four trips a year um, to do that. And we did that. She knew nothing about travel. She knew nothing about Facebook ads and we taught her how to do that. Um, and that's what she does. And so she's got a relationship coaching business and she's got this travel business, single docs that travel. And this is what she does. So you've got three examples. We've got many more examples of people who are doing the same thing. Their goal is to create a community around their niche of which they show up as the expert they provide strategic content value and they drop promotions and they're selling their tickets. So you can't tell me one Facebook ads don't work. I've got too many evidence that it does. I've been working with it for 11 years. You can't tell me that groups don't work because I've been working with groups for years and they work. You can't tell me the process doesn't work because I've got too many clients who are seeing success. If you want to see this kind of success and you want this for your travel business in a post-pandemic world, right? In a world that's coming out of pandemic, when the, the pent up energy for travel is, you should be at the forefront of that. So all you've got to do here is type Facebook group. You can just do FB group and one of my clients, so, uh, <laughs> say that 10 times, client specialists will get with you and they will have a conversation with you to see if you are a good fit for our program. And what we will do is talk to you about that. We're not trying to hard sell you. We're just trying to see if you're a fit. I'm going to tell you what makes a good fit for the program. So before you get all excited, let's talk about what makes a good fit. You've got a vision, right? That means you know that you want to do this for more than money because I will tell you if you want to sell travel for money go get a part-time job right it's easier to get a part-time job than to try and start a business right so if you know that you got a good vision you got a good idea around your business model what you want to do what kind of niche you want to work vision is the number one thing we're looking for is that you've got a strong vision and that's your high energy right if you're high energy I don't want to 
buds. I don't want people in the group who aren't really excited about this industry, excited about the business that they're starting, right? That's number two. Number three is that you are willing to spend money on Facebook ads. My recommendation is that you have between three to five hundred dollars that you're willing, and it's not something that you've got to scrape up, that you're able to do this, that you're willing to invest that kind of money in your Facebook ads, right? Because that's where the growth is going to happen. Your growth in your group is based on Facebook ads. So if you're not interested in running Facebook ads, you don't have any funds right now, this is probably not the right time for you. You need to have a budget set aside for Facebook ads. You need to have time, right? You need to have at least 10 to 15 hours a week that you can dedicate to this program because I'm going to show up, my team's going to show up, but if you don't show up, it's not going to work, right? So if you're not excited about getting this process to work, right, don't put Facebook group, scratch your name off. If you put it and you've, you've heard what I said and you're not interested in that. But if you're, if you've got those criteria, you're going to be a good fit. They're going to schedule a call with me and then we'll go from there. All right. If this is something that you think you feel like you've got those three things that we talked about, you've got a good vision, you've got high energy, you've got budget for Facebook ads, then put FB group and then we will reach out to you and talk to you. Listen, I am so excited to be back in the game. I will be back here next next Wednesday. Today's Wednesday, right? I will be back here next Wednesday with another great topic um, all about launching, operating, and the mindset of a, a successful, profitable travel business owner. Listen, I am out of Georgia now. Hopefully the background will be a little bit better set, but i um, super glad to be, uh, for those that have joined me live, those that watch me in the replay, do not forget to push hashtag replay. Let me know that you were here and I look forward to seeing you. You guys have a great rest of your week and it was great to be back again. Talk to you soon.